Hey, what is up guys? Jay here from MJ Tech. Today with another electric bike. This one is available on Amazon. It is called the Ice and Wheel D4. This one has a price of about $700, $800 after the coupons that are available for it. We are talking about a 750 watt electric bicycle with 48 volts, 15 amp hours, able to give you up to 55 miles in range. It has disc brakes on the front and the rear. I'm pretty sure they are mechanical brakes. It does have a rear rack. It folds in half and it's able to go up to 20 miles an hour, guys. What I like the most so far about this particular bike is the fact that it is portable. Whether you take the train, you take the bus, or inside of a car, this will most likely fit because it folds in half. So without further ado, let's see what comes inside of the box guys as usual this one only took about five days to arrive it was a little bit longer than usual it gets shipped here from the u.s and uh yeah it took about five days it came via fedex and surprising enough nothing is damaged we can see this one comes very nicely wrapped on the inside most of them do so we had the rear rack assembled by the way this bike has a weight of about 66 pounds and it comes according to eisen wheel it comes about 90 percent assembled boom so we got this thing out of the box obviously and something i did forget to mention is the fact that these tires are puncture proof just like we saw with the veron but they are 20 inch of course and yes they are four inches wide which is nice this is the widest i've seen for a 20 inch bike and the peak power on this bike is in fact 750 watts but the true motor is a 500 watt and well that's still more than sufficient for what i'm going to use it but i just wanted to clarify that for you guys here without further ado let's take everything out of the bike meaning all the wraps and assemble it excited here for the ice and wheel d4 on the back i can tell that it comes with a proper tail light something that not every e-bike out there includes this is a very heavy duty uh, bracket that we have on the back side i mean this thing i wouldn't be surprised if it holds me and i'm 225 pounds even though they're not recommending it but i'm telling you right now this is a heavy duty rack on the back the the railer here comes with a seven speed Shimano system and we have a single speed on the front here. And yes, it is a foldable design as I explained before, we have the battery right here. The headlight is also a horn guys. So again, that's not something that every bike includes. And for my surprise, it comes with an adjustable suspension towards the front. If you look here at the bottom, we have a few things that came with it and that's going to be the fender. We have a tire inflator that came included with this bike. We have the kickstand and the seat in which the seat does fold. It has a little latch. We have seen the system before on other e-bikes and it is great. Also, this is, uh, well, I thought it was a suspension seat, but no, this is a rigid seat. Uh, keep in mind that with the Ison Wheel D4, we don't get a rear suspension. And I am assuming that in here, we have all the hardware such as the pedals maybe the charger so we have the pedals and these are foldable pedals as well we get the power cord with some tools to assemble it we have the uh, front wheel mount and here is the charger guys i'm assuming this is another 56 volt maybe 2 amp charger Let's go ahead and verify that right now. And yes, it is a 54.6 volt, two amp charger. 
All right guys, so our first step here is to install the handlebar together with the whole stem system. So the stem, it's a shorty one. It is not like the ones that we see on typical bikes. That's because we have a folding system. So the way this goes, it's like in an angle. So when you have your front suspension aligned, this piece is pointing towards the front side of the bike. The reason being is that when you fold it, the handlebar kind of goes to one side. So it doesn't fold exactly towards the back it kind of like angles out so you have to uh, position it several times until you get the proper alignment and by positioning it i mean that once you tighten up this bolt on the top which is a uh, allen size number six then you need to unfold it and see if it's aligned here with the front suspension if that makes sense all right guys so our next step here is to do the headlight and the fender so i already removed this 10 millimeter nut with the screw and the two washers that are included and all we have to do really is just place this like so then we grab a screw with one washer and we sort of do this, okay? Now we position the fender. By the way, this fender is totally optional. You don't have to install it if you don't like it. I do because it keeps debris away from the bike. So now that we have it like this, now we put the other washer on the back side here, like so, and then we put in the nut. There you go, guys. So we have this mount right here, guys. You had to remove this before installing the front wheel. This is just for support so that during shipment, it doesn't get damaged. Just remove it and then just toss it to the side. Now we have this little quick release type of system here. So all we have to do is remove just one side of it. Now we simply lift up the wheel and then place it right in between those uh, brake pads and I'm referring to the disc brake. So now we got this thing pre-positioned on here. Let's go ahead and insert the little quick release. All right, there we go. And now from the other side, we put on first the uh, little spring. Okay, now we put in this retaining clip on here, like so. And now we simply tighten up the plastic nut. And then once you get it positioned, now you can go ahead and get it tight, like so. And that's it guys, check that out. We got the front wheel mounted. And now we have the pedals. This is the left side and they are labeled correctly. So this is L for left. And it tells you that this is a counterclockwise type of thread. Make sure that you insert it in with patience, guys. You don't want to insert this the wrong way, otherwise you will mess up the threads and it'll become a quick nightmare. For the right side, same scenario, but now we go clockwise. Just a quick observation that I've noticed from this bike and also other electric bikes is that it comes with a derailleur protector. During shipment, sometimes this does get a little bit bent, so what you do is with your own hands, you pull it out a little bit just to give it a little bit of free space so that when you do shift gears it moves freely our next step is to mount the kickstand so just remove the 10 millimeter nut from the screw and once you do that there's no washers none of that stuff simply place it in here into the frame and pre-bolt it on the back all set here with the kickstand. What we really have to assemble here now is just the seat, but I will encourage you guys to really check all of the bolts that came already pre-installed with the bike. For instance, these two, you might think that they're nice and secure, and I just checked them, these are size number four, and I could literally take them off with my hand. You can see how easily they spin, guys. For the tires, it caught me by surprise that the front tire already had the proper air in it. This one is at 15, we can pump it up to 20, in which I already did, so let's go ahead and inflate it. 
For the battery, we have a little ignition switch, very similar to a car, I would say. So right now, it's flicked all the way to the right. It means that your battery is fully functional with the bike and you can start it and start riding. If you want to remove the battery or before we remove it if you want just to turn it off just flick it once towards the left now you have absolutely no power to the uh, bike and you can actually remove the key and you are set to go if you want to remove the battery there's a little pin here that you can see when it detaches from the rail so you go you press in and then you go all the way to the left now the battery is fully removable guys this is in case you want to replace it or you prefer to charge it then you can do so this way. You have to remove the quick release a little bit. Let's go ahead and move this a little bit towards the right so that the battery comes out and boom, check this out guys. So now I'm gonna show you how to unfold this bike. It's super simple. The first thing you wanna start doing is unfolding the pedals for this. You kinda like push them in, inward like so. Now we undo here the latch for the stem and you bring down the whole thing. Now we have this little bracket here where it says open. You have to move that switch all the way to the front, undo the latch, and now we fold it in half, guys. We got it folded, guys. It is that simple. And to unfold it, you do everything in reverse. Now we undo the front, like so. We reattach the latch on here, like this. Now we straighten the front mount, put it in place. Don't forget that there's like a little uh, plastic holder for the front latch. Make sure that you place it in there. And now we undo the pedals. And voila guys. This is how you fold it and unfold it. With the front suspension, we can make it stiffer by moving it towards the right or making it softer by moving this tab towards the left, guys. To get the bike started, I already show you guys what you have to do directly from the battery. You must ensure that your ignition is turned on. After you do that, now you come back here and press on the M button. Just press and hold it for about two seconds and you will get this prompted on your display. Now, the first thing we have here on the upper left hand side corner is going to be your speedometer. Then you have your battery indicator, your battery indicator in percentage. Then you have your pedal assist mode. So we have up to five. That's because I already unrestricted it, but when you get it out of the box, it's gonna go up to three. Then you have your odometer right here, guys. And if you press on the mode button, then you get other things like trip, you get the voltage information from the bike, and you get the current uh, uh, wattage for the motor as well, and then the time that the bike has been turned on. And of course, it goes back into the odometer. It came already with one mile into the odometer. So I'm assuming that's because of the uh, testing. All right, so now in order to get to the P settings, you have to hold and press the arrows up and down here, and that'll take you to the P settings. Keep in mind, guys, that you do have the P settings here on the manuals, which I'm gonna show you right now. This is very nice by Eisen Wheel. Not every manufacturer out there includes them. So I kind of know already the most important ones. So we're gonna do the same thing again. Let's just go ahead and hold and press here the arrow up and down. And this is P0, uh, P01. Now this here guys is for your backlight. This is for when you have it, uh, let's say uh, with the headlight turned on, then the brightness is gonna reflect based on this number. So we're gonna leave it at three. Then we have P02. This is for your kilometers and miles. So I like it in miles. We're gonna leave it just at that. And it came like that by default. And then it jumps straight to P08, as you guys can observe right here. So a P08, that's for your uh, speed. And it came at 32 from factory. So let's go back to P08. Right here, guys, you can see how I set it up to 100. If you have it in kilometers, it'll go up to 50. Beautiful evening here in Florida today, guys. And I gotta say this Ison Wheel D4 really impresses me. 
So as I mentioned before, to get it started, you simply hit the M button here and that'll get the bicycle started. Now I did unlock it and you guys won't believe that I did 30 miles an hour with this bike. So we're gonna set it up to uh, pedal assist number five. And I'm about to show you a speed test just right now. Now again, I wasn't expecting this. I was simply just testing the bike. And so, yes, I was able to do 29 miles an hour and I got it recorded, guys. So if you look here, it says right now that we're doing about 25. So yes, doing the P settings, again, P08, you want to set that one to 100%. If you have it set on miles, if you have it on kilometers, you have to set it up to 50, I believe. So here we go, guys. We're gonna do that test once more. And of course, if you pedal, it helps it a little bit. So right here, you see, they, they were telling us that the maximum speed was only about 20 miles an hour. But right here, you can see how we are steadily increasing that speed. Check this out, guys. Super dope. 27. 28. And I'm hoping the camera is capturing this. So we got stuck at about 28. So the speedometer on the bike is actually not correct, guys. It is stating that you're doing 20, 25 miles. But in reality, we did 28. The bike is super awesome. Keep in mind that for the rear, we don't have a suspension. Now coming from the Veron bike that I unboxed and reviewed not too long ago, well, you feel the difference from not having a rear suspension, guys. Now, as per the battery longevity, well, I can't tell you guys that yet. You only have about three miles into the bike. I love the fact that we can adjust the uh, front suspension on here. That's a plus. Also, just like with the Veron, uh, the the railer came already well calibrated. So if you select the uh, speed, let's say five, it goes into five, six, seven. So we know we only have a seven speed system here. Also guys, keep in mind that we have uh, the puncture proof tires as well. So we're gonna go pedal assist one. And this is the maximum speed we get. Now this is two. Okay, with two we get a little more, we get about 15. Then four. We get into the 17s, 18s, 19, 19, and we know what 5 does, guys. We know that already. Wow. 5 just goes crazy. I mean, 5 just basically doesn't have a limit. It goes from 19 to almost 30. So that's uh, 11 miles increment right there, guys, on that last itty bitty, guys. Remember that these are mechanical brakes. These are not hydraulic brakes. So right here, we're gonna stop at about this point. And yeah, it's like any other mechanical brake. I mean, nothing special about it. Can't believe I'm passing a moped. I can't believe this, guys. I can't believe my eyes. I just passed a 50cc moped, guys. I just passed a 50cc moped. Wow. <laughs> There's 
she is. Wow. But for right now, we are ending this trip right here after about, uh, I think it was about like five miles or so. Just about five miles. We are ending it with 91%, not letting the throttle go with a max speed of 30 miles an hour, guys. I'll be right back. All right, guys, so here we are now at the Okihili Park, and I'm not sure if, uh, well, here in Florida, I call it the Okihili Park, but yes, this is just like another park that happens to have some hills here in florida it's uh really hard to find hills and well this is one of them and we have about a 15 percent incline plus we are doing it off road guys just so that you can see that this thing is more than capable and i am 225 pounds so we're going to set it up to the maximum which is pedal assist number five and here we go guys i'm not even pedaling i'm just going to leave it up to the bike you go uphill and if i do have to pedal believe me guys i will let you know so we are going uphill at about 11 miles i won't lie it did struggle a little bit but it did it guys so of course we have the off-road capabilities as well and as expected it does pretty pretty good so let's go now downhill and test the brakes so I'm gonna stop at the middle of this hill. And yeah, the tire did skid a little bit, but it does stop quite well, guys. So like I said, the brakes are mechanical, but the pads are pretty good quality. So that gives us the ability to stop. Well, guys, that is it for today's unboxing, assembly, and review of the Ison Wheel D4. Excellent little bike here for the money. You're paying about 800 bucks and this thing can do up to 30 miles an hour as I have proven here on this channel. Things that I love about this bike is the fact that it has an actual horn, front and rear lights or tail lights, a removable battery, foldable in half, fat tires. You get pretty much everything that all of us want on a bike with the exception of rear suspension, but we can't get it all guys. I love the fact that it has again tail lights. Not every bike offers this feature. It comes with a pretty nice controller as well. I have to give this a nine out of a 10. The things that I didn't like are just two things. It doesn't have hydraulic brakes. That would have been a plus and that it doesn't have rear suspension. Besides that, I love this bike. I also like the fact that it has a adjustable front suspension as well. It comes with a horn. Not every bike has a horn. Let's go ahead and you can hear it. Well, guys, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe for more. Click on the bell icon and comment below if you haven't done so. See you later.